Hi, welcome back. In these next few sessions, I'd like to talk about trading based upon information. In a sense, this is a shift away from the last two philosophies. In value investing, we were looking for cheap or companies that look cheap because they were being priced at well below the value of their assets in place. In growth investing, we were looking for companies that look cheap because they were trading at well below the value of their growth assets. Now we're going to, to lead that pathway of looking for companies that are undervalued and look for a different way of making money. To set the table, let's think about how prices get set in markets. You have investors. Investors get information. Not all of them get information from the same places. Some of the information comes from the company and might hit all investors at the same time. Some investors have access to special sources of information. I will leave, it, leave untouched whether those sources are legal or in, illegal. But my point is investors come into markets with different types of information from different places and they trade based on that information. You could even give every investor in the market the same information. That doesn't mean that they're going to agree on value. So effectively markets are clearing mechanism which have investors with different amounts of information and different readings of that information trying to assess the value of a company and the price is what emerges from the demand and supply based upon those investors. Now here's how information affects prices in an efficient market. The prices essentially reflect the existing information in the market. New information comes up. That new information, if you're in an efficient market, has about a 50-50 chart of being good news or bad news because the existing value reflects all of the existing information. The new information comes out of its good news, and this is a graph for good news, the price jumps on that good news. The price will jump because the new value based upon the, the good news is higher than the old value. But it'll happen instantaneously at the time the information comes out, and once the information is out, the price will revert back to steady state. The steady state, of course, will be much higher than what it was before the information came out. But the key is, in an efficient market, there will be a reaction, but the reaction will be instantaneous. If it were bad news, you'd reverse this graph. The price will drop again instantaneously and then level off at whatever the new, new value assessed for the company will be. Now, how would an inefficient market look? Well, it depends. If you have a slow learning market, and you have good news come out about a stock, here's what's going to happen. The price will go up, but rather than go up instantaneously, it'll drift up. The key is it'll happen gradually over time. Over how much time? Depends on how inefficient the market is. It could be two hours, it could be two weeks, it could be two months. The more inefficient a market, the longer it takes for the price to adjust to the new value. Eventually, it reaches the same steady state it did in an efficient market, but it takes a while to get there. So in a slow learning market, you have a drift upwards after good news and a drift downwards after bad news. Here's another version of an inefficient market. You could have a market that overreacts. So the good news comes out, the price jumps, but it jumps too much. And because it's jumped too much, in the periods after, the price starts to revert back to that fair value. So again, you're reverting back to the value you had in an inefficient market, but you're doing it by first overreacting and then coming back down. So if you, with good news in an overreacting market, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a big price jump on the good news, and then you're going to see prices drift down after good news in the, in the days after the good news, in the periods after the good news, and you're going to see prices drift up after bad news. So you have an efficient market where prices react instantaneously and reach a new steady state. You have a slow learning market where prices drift up after good news and drift down after bad news. And you have an overreacting market where prices actually jump too much after good news and then drift down, jump, too, uh, jump down too much after bad news and then drift up. Now, here are the strategies you can use for trading and information. Generically, there are three things you can do. You can try to get ahead of the information game, try to trade ahead of news. Now, the question is, if I don't know what the news is, how am I going to trade ahead of it? That's a touchy question. We'll come back and deal with strategies you might adopt for, for trading ahead of information, ahead of earnings announcements, ahead of acquisition announcements, but ahead of news. You can trade on the news announcement. Again, you might wonder, how am I going to make money? We'll talk about strategies of trading on the news announcement. Or you can trade after the news. Wait till the news comes out and trade after the news. Let's think about trading ahead of the news. If you're trading ahead of the news, you need to have some way of finding out that there is a news item coming. Here are the three sources you might tap. First is insider or private information. 
Of course, in the U.S., that information is illegal, so that's got to be weighed into your strategy. But in some markets, that might not be legal. If you're an analyst tracking a company in an emerging market, managers might reveal information selectively to you. So that might be the first place, is you might have access to insider or private information that tells you that a news announcement is coming. It could be rumor mills. Even in a market like the U.S. where you have insider trading rules, it's amazing how many rumors get started. And some rumors have more basis than others, but it might be rumor mills telling you that something is going to happen in a company. It could be research. What kind of research? There are investors who watch the tick to look at the trading volume, and they look for jumps in trading volume as a signal that something is happening in the company. So the first place you go is to actually get some sense that news is coming and try to get, get ahead of the news. Of course, how, how you will take advantage of the news and how much money you're willing to invest will depend on how reliable the news is. And that will depend upon, first, where you get the information. If it's a rumor mill, you might trust it less than if it's an insider. But that's the first place. The second is your investment strategy will also vary depending on how reliable the information is. If it's absolutely perfect information, you know for sure that news story is coming out, you might put all your money in that stock and then hope and pray that that new story is right. But if the new story is unreliable, you might take a much more nuanced approach where you try to make money, but you hedge yourself, protect yourself in case the new story is not right. So that's getting ahead of the news. And if you can get ahead of good news, clearly you're going to make money or bad news. If you're going to, so essentially, if you can get ahead of the news and you're right about the news, you're going to make money. The second way you can try to make money is wait for the news announcement, trade on the news announcement. What are you trying to do? You're trying to take advantage of either the price reaction or the volatility reaction. Let me explain. We, ta we talked about how on good news the price jumps, right? And bad news the price drops. If it's not an efficient market, if it's a slow learning market, you might buy on good news because you know that prices will tend to drift up after good news. You'll tend to sell after bad news because you know that prices will drift down after bad news. So you might trade on the price reaction if you believe that markets are either slow learning or overreacting. That's, and so that's one way in which you might take advantage of news. The other is you can trade on volatility. In other words, even if the price reaction is right, the reaction in terms of what the market thinks about expected future volatility might shift. The way this is going to show up is in the prices of options on the stock or derivative assets. So this is, some, this is a relatively new game. It, re, it requires the derivative assets and options be traded. And if you feel, for instance, that volatility has jumped too much, the price reaction is right, but the volatility reaction is, is too much, you might decide to sell options because you're selling volatility. If you think the volatility reaction is too small, you might decide to buy options. So on the news, you might either trade on the price reaction or the volatility reaction, but the choices you have have actually expanded, especially over the last two or three decades. Now let's look at the third strategy you can adopt. If you believe markets are slow learning, then all you need to do is buy stocks after good news and hold, right? Because how long will depend on how how long it takes for markets to learn because as prices drift up you're going to make money if you believe that it's going to be bad if it's bad news you're going to sell short and then hold for as long as it needs to be for the price to keep going down if it's an overreacting market you're going to reverse that strategy you're going to sell right after good news and buy right after bad news because again you expect the price reaction to be corrected over time over the, the weeks after the news announcement so in summary Trading on information is a very different way of investing than trading on whether a stock is cheap or expensive. But it is an investment philosophy. It's based on the assumption that markets don't always react appropriately to news. And in the sessions to follow, we will look at the evidence on whether, in fact, there's a basis for information trading. But the key is to have a well-thought-out strategy of how you're going to exploit information and what kind of market mistake you're exploiting. Thank you very much for listening.